Test, test, one, two, three. This is Noah with Northern Scavenger. How's it going? What's going on guys? This is Noah with Northern Scavenger and welcome to this week's video. It is mid-November and it is absolutely beautiful out. It is Tuesday and yesterday I was looking at the weather after work and I realized it was gonna be 18 degrees and sunny today and tomorrow. So I decided to take the next couple days off work and go explore a cabin out on the south shore of Nova Scotia. The cabin is off grid and was built about 100 years ago. It's also pretty deep in the backwoods and I'm gonna have to go up a river and travel across lakes and portages to get there. So I came to these mushrooms here, and I don't know enough about mushrooms to pick them and eat them, but they almost look like a rishi. Might be pronouncing that wrong, but it's a medicinal mushroom that you can actually harvest in the woods. Uh, I don't know, but it kind of looks like it. Maybe you guys know, let me know in the comments below. I'm not gonna pick it though. When you're paddling up river and there's a current, you don't want to go straight into the current. You want to take it on angles and that's called ferrying. It uses the water to your advantage and it tacks you across. You can actually go up river on an angle and that's easier than going straight at the current. Made it. This is how you get yourself into trouble. Holding your expensive camera, trying to line rapids. Oh, especially when the rocks move a bit. Woo! Okay. That wasn't too bad. I'm hoping on my way back I can just find the line. Well, all these rapids, really, I hope I can just run. Anyways, I think that's it for river for a while. It is hot outside. I am actually pretty warm in just my t-shirt. The weather we've had recently has been pretty strange. Two weeks ago, we had about four inches of snow and we got hurricanes, wind, rain, cold weather, warm weather, even this, this entire year has been strange for weather, but you just gotta roll with the punches because you can't really do much about it. One thing I do know, when it's so nice like this, you cannot waste the taste. You gotta get outside, you gotta do something fun. I know I said the river running was done, but looking at the map, I got one more set. And I think this is a, a full-blown portage. I should have known better the set coming up is called Big River Run. Probably a portage. Found the portage. It is right on a campsite, which is sweet. And the portage follows the river right beside it. So I can actually scout it on my way up to see if I can run it on my way back. But first look, it looks very bony. And it looks like there's a lot of sweepers and fallen trees crossing the river. So in these older succession forests, when the big trees do fall, they open up the canopy and that allows light to come down into the, 
the forest floor. And that allows the undergrowth to start growing again. And here's a great example. You have all these trees in this one spot that have started to fall over and they created this opening and you can see all this undergrowth underneath starting to come to life. Compared to here where the canopy is still full and because of that the undergrowth is very thin and sparse. I forgot my knowledge at basketball last night. Pretty devastated, but this water bottle will have to do for the next couple days. There she is, looking sexy as ever. We made it. There's firewood outside. It's not messy. There's no garbage. Lots of pots. As always, these places just accumulate pots and pans. Soaps. Lots of cutlery. Condiments. Wow, those are actually live beers. And they're cold too. Huh, McClay's, I might have to have one. Homemade wheelbarrow. It's chinked with a bunch of different stuff. Everything from moss to spray foam. There's a lot of history at this cabin. I don't think this was carved from 1928, but I believe that would mean that this cabin was built in 1928 and it's been around since then, used by people like me and others to come out here and enjoy the backcountry. And then before that, it was a ranger cabin. So rangers would come back here and it would be their outpost when they'd be in this area doing their surveillance for, for poachers or, or whatever they do back here. It's very cool coming to these places and feeling a part of the history.
So there's another new item that I bought, and this is what I call a luxury item. This is an inflatable pillow. Most of the time I do use my dry bag as a pillow, but sometimes I don't pack a lot of clothes, so I have nothing really to stuff it with. And in those situations, I still want to have something for my, for my neck and my head. So I bought this from Amazon. It's like 15 bucks. Very small and compact, first impressions. I believe, I believe it is called a foam. The brand is called foam. You can see it's pretty small. And you just blow it up. I've been using this all year when I don't have enough clothes to use my dry bag. And it is really good. I've been very impressed. The material is like, it's, it's nice. It's, it's a lot nicer than my PVC dry bag. The one thing I noticed is if you don't stick it in the hood of your sleeping bag, it has a tendency to pop out from behind you. The durability, I'm a little suspect of. It does seem thin. I feel like I could puncture it in the wrong situation, but I haven't yet. So, so far so good. This has been a great little luxury item that I bring on my shoulder season camping trips. So I know you guys are probably desperately waiting to see what food I brought with me. Did he bring bologna again? Is he gonna fry it this time? Is he gonna have it raw? Is he gonna eat all processed meat? Well, let me show you guys. For lunch, I have two pre-made sandwiches, roast beef sandwiches. I started getting into pre-making my sandwiches. I find it a lot nicer once I'm out here. I don't have to worry about chopping up the cheese and the meat and the mustard and the bread. I just literally, boom, sandwich. Wait, boom, two sandwiches. Breakfast, I really don't mess around with. This is something that I've consistently done for years. Oatmeal, protein powder, and peanut butter. And it's about a thousand calories, but this is my go-to. Bars, can't go wrong with bars. Big ass chocolate bar. And for dinner, this is what I got. A spaghetti squash. But hold on, beef chili with beans. And half a block of mozzarella cheese. So I'm gonna come up with some sort of concoction with these three things tonight. I've never brought a spaghetti squash on a trip. It's kind of awkward, it's kind of heavy. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, this is pretty much what I'll be eating over the next 24 hours. Let's not forget, I brought myself a craft beer, Galaxy IPA from Propeller Brewing, company here in Nova Scotia. So I've just been doing some exploring around the back of the cabin and it looks like a lot of trees have fallen over the last year or two. Very lucky that these trees haven't hit the cabin because it would probably go right through the roof. That was pretty cold. It's really warm outside, but it is mid-November, so that water is crisp. So refreshing though. Can't beat it. Sunset like this deserves a pop.
I did not bring my fishing rod with me. I would have if the fishing season was open, and it is not open right now. The native fish here are brook trout, but I don't know what the situation is with the invasive species. I know chain pickerel and smallmouth bass have really been taking over these lakes. The native brook trout population has been declining, though back here I suspect you'd still be catching some fish. That is not good. I did find another axe. It does not look as nice, but it'll do. I'm gonna hold off for now and finish up tomorrow morning. I've gotten comments on other videos about filtering this water and the fact that it's still kind of brown after it's filtered. And the color you see, that's the tannins. That's the natural tannins of the water. That's totally normal, totally natural, and it's not gonna hurt me. Think of the tannins as like a tea, like it steeps from the uh, natural organics that are in the water. And there's no bacteria on that, there's no viruses, there's no beaver fever. Totally normal, totally fine. It doesn't do anything to your body. Jesus. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm trying to figure out a good way to set up the lighting here, but this is gonna blind the shit out of me, so we might have to go red light. Ooh, blue. This is cool. It's like a party in here. All right, guys, I got the fire going. I'm about to start working on dinner, but first I had a thought. There's my clays here that someone left right behind me. And in the next few months or the next few weeks, these might freeze and pop. So it might be in the best interest of the cabin if I drink at least one of these. I think that's the right thing to do for the cabin anyways. Cheers. Thank you whoever left the McClays here. You're a gem. This is really creepy. Do we want to go blue? What other options do we have? That is also pretty creepy. Huh, that's not too bad. I wish I had candles with me, but I don't. So I'm gonna have to work with this light. And I think this setting is probably the best for us. Blue is too sci-fi, red is too devil-like. I think this is just right. It's about 5.30. The sun set about an hour ago, but there's still some light out there. It's odd because it's so warm outside, but it's already dark at before dinner time. Very strange time.
So what the plan is going to be is I'm going to cut this buster open. Scoop out the guts. So I'm going to put that in a pan. I'm going to put that in the fire for a bit just to loosen up. That's what I want. The other one isn't as good. We're gonna put it in anyways. We're gonna put some of this right on there. Again, keeping her simple, folks. Originally, I was gonna go with a pasta sauce and a meat, but then I found this canned chili that has both pasta sauce and meat. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to get a can of this chili. Now I'm going to put that back in the oven, put the aluminum foil on top, and let her bake. It's hot in there. Let's see what we got. We got cheese stuck to the aluminum foil, folks. All right, I'm gonna try to recover that quickly. That's what we gotta do. That's perfect. That is not bad. It almost tastes like spaghetti. Or maybe that's just my mind tricking me because it's the same sort of look and texture. Yeah, this is not bad at all. There's flavor, calories, tastes good. It's all good. So this axe head has been welded onto this piece of metal. It's quite awkward. It's not that sharp either, but we'll give it a go. That worked.
it's not amazing, but it still works. So I'm going to do what I can on this wood. Not really cutting it, just like smacking it. Cowboy coffee and oatmeal with a lot of peanut butter. So this log book goes all the way back to 1989 to the most recent log. And it looks like the ax handle that's loose out there was documented before. I do know I'll be coming back here in the near future, so I will be bringing an ax. So I found a really funny one from last night. May 19th. 1990. You may choose your time, you may choose your place, you may put on your choicest flies, but never was it safe to bet that a single trout would rise. Don, Leonard, Bruce, and Mark, back at it again. Been fishing a few days west of here, 114 trout. Most released, but a few for the frying pan. Panther Martins and a few home tide flies, deadly this year. Water was high and cold, a couple nice days, then windy, cold, five degrees, and rainy yesterday. Pulled in this morning and had a lunch, then fixed up the stovepipe, nice and warm. Now with gear drying all over the camp, Fishaholic Don is out in his canoe again, and Mark and Purit are playing crib. Wind is picking up again, southwest, probably rain again. More later, maybe, party night. B. I love coming to these places because the amount of history and the amount of stories that have been told in these places and the amount of rum and beer that have been drank if only the walls could talk. But luckily, we have logbooks like this to recite old stories. All right guys, that's a wrap. I cleaned up a bit, I sweeped the floor, I did my dishes, I chopped up some kindling, I stacked some firewood, and I prepared it nicely for the next people. I also filled an entire garbage bag of just random stuff around the cabin that I don't think anyone will ever touch. I'm gonna to quickly log in the log book so I can add my two day adventure to the history of the cabin. The sun is starting to come out. I got a bit of a headwind on the way back, but conditions shouldn't be too bad. I expect there to be some wind, so I'm gonna put all my heavy stuff right in the front of the boat to try to even me out. My balance has definitely increased over the last few years carrying a camera around because it does make stakes a lot higher if you do fall. See ya, cabin. Until next time. All that fog this morning rolled out. And it's turning out to be quite a beautiful day. The headwind that I was worried about isn't even that bad. It's not even a headwind. It's kind of like a side wind. But you never know after having such a nice day yesterday, typically a front moves through. On the way back, I'm trying the sneak route, and it's this small creek that goes around one of the portages. 
There seems to be some moving water between the little ponds, but it is still pretty bony. picking up a bit. Oh, that wind is strong. Okay, I'm blowing off course. Ah, come on. A system is definitely coming through. It's starting to get really gusty and it's just blowing me all over the place. So I made it to the big portage. I'm actually gonna to try to run most of it in the canoe. It's gonna be very rocky and shallow, but I think I can pinball my way down. I'm gonna bring my big day bag into the center of the boat. And that allows more weight right in the middle. You wanna be able to pivot. So it's the complete opposite when you're on a lake. You wanna extend your weight because you wanna stay straight. <laughs> I want to make myself slower than the water. Because this is a long set and there's a lot of unknowns, I'm going to be back paddling through most of it. Oh, she's bumpy. So f bony. Sometimes I wonder if it's just easier to do the portage, but that's not as fun. The boat knows the right way to go, so if you just let her go down, she'll find the path. All right, that's a wrap, guys. I made it back to the car. Awesome couple days out exploring the cabin. Beautiful spot, beautiful weather. Thanks again for joining me. Until next time.